I'm joined by two of the leading guys in the obstacle racing sports space. Please meet Nolan Combo. He is head of course design over at Tough Mudder and is coming to you straight from Brooklyn. You might recognize the other guy hanging out with us today. He's graced the pages of Men's Fitness Runner's World where he was deemed the maniac next door. He happens to be the reigning world's toughest mudder. How's that for an introduction? June Young Pac over in Beverly. For your average guy or gal who's done a few 5Ks and wants to do their first Tough Mudder, what type of training or preparation would you recommend for them to do? Test up or out. It's going to test you differently than it would some of the, the older mothers out there too who, who might be more comfortable with the, the running aspect but might, might not be as comfortable with the, the amount of obstacles that are thrown out there in a town that a lot of the younger participants uh, are able to handle the, the agility and balance and strength based off. It's much easier because they're coming off of being an athlete maybe in high school or, or prepping mm -hmm. an athlete in college um, where some of the older mothers have, have stepped away from that and they come into the running scene so they're, they're, they're more comfortable This is a life-changing sport for a lot of people. They go and do one of these, and they get they fall in love, not just with the obstacles and the um, and the events, but just in fitness in general. And people who hate running do these obstacle races, and they they don't realize it's a running event for the most part. And they get into it, and they, they their lives change 180 degrees. They go from being overweight and obese to uh, getting into shape, getting their life in order, like not just in the physical sense, but other aspects of life. They they become motivated to just live a live a, a healthier, fuller life. Um, you know, they go into work every day and they just have a renewed step. Um, you now, so I mean, in the process with which you design a course, do you actually keep only the hardcore guys in mind, or do you kind of remember the average Joes that are trying this? <laughs> First question, designing course is just for hardcore areas. And again, World Stuff Smutter is kind of a, a, a different challenge for us. We obviously design that for, for elite athletes. It's a much tougher challenge. So I would say that's much more focused on our hardcore audience who are, who are into the obstacle racing scene. Um, and obviously, we feel that we put up a very good course for them. But our, 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 our regular Tough Mudder events that happen all around the, all around the world, we, we, we try to walk a very delicate balance between hardcore athletes and regular athletes, and we pay a lot of attention to the success and failure rates of each obstacle. Um, so taking Funky Monkey, for example, which is one of our staple obstacles that is at every one of our events, uh, we pay very close attention to the spacing between the bars, uh, the amount they rotate, which ones rotate, and really try to calculate what that success rate is. What we're trying to achieve is perfect balance, what we think is perfect balance between elite athletes and people who are pushing themselves and challenging themselves and really want to get out there and, and try these obstacles. We don't want to make them easy enough so that you get through the event. You don't feel, really feel like you pushed yourself. You want everybody to come out of the event and say, I really challenged myself. I pushed myself. And maybe I didn't make all the obstacles, but I made 70% of them, 60% of them. Next time, I'm going to try for that 70, 85%. So using the average American athlete, I would say their first event, it's okay to, to finish maybe 60 Seventy percent of the obstacles that come back and get to that eighty percent. It's going to be very rare that an athlete can be able to finish one hundred percent of the obstacles, and that's the way we go about designing. Harder than training. physical. So maybe you can elaborate a little bit more on what you do physically, but also mentally to get ready and stay in the race. Oh yeah, the I think the mental part of it is the hardest by far because you can uh, once you start moving, get out the door, just go into your routine. Uh, machine mode. You just start cranking out miles and, and pull-ups and exercise, what, whatever form it is. But um, setting a plan up, you know, let's say you're going to do 150 miles this week and then saying, I've got to do that now. You know, that's, that's hard to commit to off the bat. Um, and, um, you know, saying that you're going to go to the park on a lazy Sunday and go submerge yourself in 45 degree ocean waters over and over again, get sandy, get, throw sand down your wetsuit and just be totally miserable for four hours at a time. It's, it's um, you know, that doing it is a lot easier than thinking about doing it in my, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Um, you know, just if you're working a nine to five job, then getting out of work driving home, commuting, feeling hungry, tired, cold, and uh, conjuring up the, the energy, the, the, the will to get out there and um, 
put in that sort of training to hold yourself accountable to something that you said that you would do. And that's easily the hardest part of it. The training just comes naturally for at least at least for me. Junyong, you can share what your tactic is. Um, and then maybe Nolan, you have a secret that you would recommend for the Berlin Wall. Feet and um, some of them have steps, some of them don't. And some of them occur in a regular tough mutter, some of them occur in a world's toughest mutter. You have to kind of gauge where and what context it falls. Um, if it's a just a regular tough mutter and you're trying to do this course as fast as you can, you can uh, do what's uh, it's a parkour move. It's it's a wall run where you run up there and you take a parkour two, <laughs> parkour parkour. <laughs> you take two steps on the wall itself and then you jump up and grab the wall and fling yourself over. But um, but if it's a world's toughest matter, you want to try and sip your energy. Um, you know, think of your uh, legs as resources that uh, will degrade over time and uh, impact. So the most efficient way, get as low as you can before you release from the wall. Um, I do a spinning maneuver on the top of the wall, which is kind of like a, a wrestling move. So favorite obstacle and top piece of advice for being safe. Come down unnecessarily awkwardly on their ankles when they when they they could take the time to understand how to how to properly land that proper fall. Uh, training that for that is simply you know doing a lot of box jumps uh, when you're tired you know going for a long run and doing that and understanding how your ankles so work. For me, uh, my favorite obstacle it's pretty simple, pretty basic. One of the standards is mud mile. Um, I, I I love the way that it turns out. It, it really depends on the type of soil we're working with, but when, it, when it's right, it's absolutely amazing. It's perfect. It involves a lot of teamwork. It's tough and it's great and it, it really represents what Tough Hunter is very well. My dog's barking on her. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh...